up? It's Alex. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. In a small town in Texas, a normal American politician was doing his job. I would not, could not vote for this bill. Not on a plane, not on a train, not on a boat, or in a car. He was well-liked by his Republican colleagues and had a very regular life. But that all changed when Donald Trump showed up. You have an ugly wife, Ted. She's not very good looking. I own the nicest wife. I've owned many wives. Oh, so many wives. And Ted didn't defend his wife. Something was wrong. Give it to me straight, doctor. What's the diagnosis? I'm sorry, Ted. I'm afraid you have anti-testiculitis. It, is it terminal? No, it just means that you have no balls. Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. He was searching for options until he found an unlikely ally. Listen, Ted, I know I called you the Zodiac Killer, insulted your wife, and, and your dad said said he killed Kennedy, called you all kinds of big, beautiful names, such, such great names, but we can work together. Doing what, Donald? Making lies, selling those lies all over America, and maybe at some point expand, become the kingpin of lies. Are you willing to work together, Ted? Well, whatever he- helps me get my balls back. What? N- nothing, never mind. From the mind of critically acclaimed writer Vince Gilligan comes another action filled drama about a normal guy who evolved into doing the unthinkable to get what he wants. We have a new business partner. His name's Vlad. He runs a fried chicken store. He's also president of Russia. Hello, GM Fulmin. You work for me now. We are going to take our disinformation worldwide. The newest show to hit your TV is going to blow your mind. I've spent most of my life scared, frightened of things that could happen, might happen, might not happen. Fifty years I spent like that, finding myself awake at three in the morning. Wishing I was able to jerk off, but I can't because of the lack of testicles. But you know what? Ever since I lost my testicles, I sleep just fine. Senator Cruz, why did you go off to Cancun as Texas froze? Can you really blame your family? I didn't do it for them. I didn't go to Cancun for them. I did it for me, Skyler. I just liked it. My name's not Skyler, it's John. Uh, so you're saying you went on vacation during a crisis in your state to avoid having to help people during this time of need? Oh, well, yes, I guess you could say that. Crushing Cruise, coming to AMC this summer. And Mrs. Cruise, just curious, how did you meet your husband? Um, I fucked Ted. Summer... 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, the short news with your host, Alex Nador. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Short News Podcast, the show where all your dreams come true. 
And if you look under your seat, you'll find, oh my, what's that? An Outback Steakhouse $10 gift card? It couldn't be. As you know, I'm Alex Mador, the only host of this show, and the guy Ted Cruz thinks is bullying him. And it's true, I am, I have been for weeks, but we aren't talking about him right now. There's other stuff going on in the world and a lot of moves being made in my own life when it comes to the future of this podcast. I have an onboarding meeting with my new podcast host and network, Blue Wire. Today, bec- um, tomorrow, sorry, not, I'm recording this on Wednesday or Thursday because, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be in, in this onboarding meeting thing. So yeah, you're getting the episode early. Uh, cause you know, I'll prob, I probably have a lot of like, I I don't know, like the RSS transfer and all that is probably gonna be a pain in the, uh, pain in the buttocks. So, um, yeah. So yeah, you heard me. The, the short news has been accepted into one of Blue Wire's programs. They're going to help be helping me out with um, growing the show, reaching out to a larger audience, and cleaning up some aesthetics and editing issues to make this thing operate smoother. This has been a big year for business moves. I'm not at a point where this is making any decent money right now, but hey, this is big progress here. We've got some legitimacy now and some big people helping out because I can't be a one-man operation anymore. It's great to be able to do things myself, but I need professionals to come in and tell me what I need to improve. So I'm really looking forward to onboarding tomorrow and the to the future of this show with with them as we grow and develop into a more established thing. But yeah, no sponsors. Yeah, you heard me. There will be no sponsors. The fake commercials, of course, will still be a thing, but until the show is getting like thousands of downloads a month, like there, there's no reason to even have sponsors, really. Like, it, it just isn't like, doesn't make sense for anybody involved. <clears throat> so what I'm asking from you guys is, um, <laughs> I've been asking a lot lately. Uh, subscribe to the show, so if you haven't, um, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser, because it helps people find out about this podcast. I haven't been I haven't been doing enough shameless promotion to get this show as big as it could be. We're very limited. For example, and this is probably my fault, we have a lot more male listeners than female listeners. It's a it's a um a sausage fest. Here, it is. I'm not relatable to females. I've definitely made some generalizations about middle-aged white women that rub people the wrong way, but I'm not taking back. We'll figure it out, though. If if you know anyone, male or female, that might get enjoyment out of this, send the show their way. Send them links to your favorite episodes. Show them the fake commercials. We... We have to spread this around a little um, through through word of mouth because um, shouting in the void on Twitter isn't doing much good. It's not. Like, you only reach so many people per tweet. Even if you have, like, thousands of followers, hundreds see, see your tweets. I don't, like, I don't know. There's not enough active people on Twitter for it to make sense. But this is good news, the Blue Wire stuff. It's great news, and a big thank you to them for accepting me into their program. There aren't that many people that get to do this or that are considered worth the company's time and resources. They're probably going to redesign the podcast artwork, which is great because the one I have now is pretty outdated. My hair isn't blonde anymore, and I'm a little bit chubbier than I was in that photo. We'll see. We'll see. I'm working on the weight loss. It's not that bad. I um, went from like 100, 120 pounds to 145 pounds, which is like actually good. I just want that weight to be not in my, 
not in my beer belly, and instead be like muscle all over my body. So that that's a work in progress. Um, but I made what I thought was a hilarious Facebook post on the whole Blue Wire situation um, because I was on some narcissistic, spiteful Drake type shit. I'll read it to you now since my Facebook isn't public. Um, only my friends can see this. But here here it is. Um, profile. Okay, so my podcast got picked up by a network and then some celebrating emojis. I'd like to thank all the people on here who didn't give a shit for not giving a shit. It's neglectful, terrible friends like you that motivated me to push further and put myself out there to a wider audience. So at the same time as I want to say fuck you, also, thank you. But actually, also fuck you. So that that's what I said on there. Got a good amount of likes. Um, because why not? You know, that's made at some very specific people. And I know they saw it. But that's where my head's been at today and last night. Like, fuck those people for not giving a shit, for not listening to a three-minute song as a friend, taking three minutes out of their 24-hour day, for someone they're supposed to give a shit about, for, for, like, for not even considering listening to this podcast, even though they reach out to ask about if they're being invited to our wedding. Why? So you can get a free meal and free drinks? How about fuck yourself? That's what I'm saying. None of those people believed in me for even a second. None of them felt like I was worth their time. Not even just with my music or this show, just as a friend. Now watch. I made that post and people who've been ignoring me for like a fucking year are reaching out all of a sudden, really apologetic about being terrible. Like, no, dude, fuck off. Too late. You want to jump on a tr on the train? When it's already left the station, you can wait for the next one to ignore until it goes somewhere good. I had a friend who I told my guinea pig was dying last year. Um, and his only response was, stop trying to make me feel bad for you. And that fucking friendship is over. Rest in peace to little Ricky, though. We, we miss you. We love you very much. Best guinea pig ever. But these... Selfish fucking pricks that only need you when you're useful for something. These pieces of shit who think they can pretend to have been my friend this whole time, who now want to come on the podcast when they have nothing to promote, just so they can be on a podcast and say they know me, investing in a fake friendship based on using an entertainer to bolster their own public status. I barely ever ask for anything from anyone. Like nothing. At all, except like and subscribe from you guys. <laughs> but you guys are cool. Anyone that listens to this show is automatically a cool person in my book. But the only time I ask for something is when I ask for a friend's feedback on a song or an ex excerpt from an episode of this show, and they just never respond. These people have treated me like shit, always needing something from me. But when I'm at my emotional worst, they're nowhere to be found. They get the fuck out of there when that happens because they're selfish and don't want to deal with it. When I make a song, they roll their eyes and don't care because it's me and I'm not worth their time. They don't even click the link to listen to the fucking song. Now those same people have, reached, have uh, seen my Facebook status and reached out with bad intentions. You didn't care when I was working my ass off to make my album. You didn't care when I was working my ass off to make this podcast. Now you care because a network is involved? Now you want to be my friend? How about shove a monster energy pan deep up your ass and fuck yourself? How about that? I will not deal with shitty people anymore. There's not enough time in this life for that. To waste on that. The people that have stuck with me through the good times and bad, those are my people. And there's a few of them. I do a clubhouse room with, with them now. We're going to try and do it every week if anyone's interested probably on Fridays. They're real friends, and I appreciate that. 
even when I've been a shitty friend, like in 2018 when I was going through my mental health and agoraphobia and wouldn't go outside to see anyone, I told them I was going, I was having a tough time psychologically. And, and I, and I hoped that they would understand and they did and still made sure I was okay, checked in on me until I was ready to start hanging out with people again. But now we're in this pandemic. It's been a whole year of this. I haven't seen anyone at all, which is really shitty, but I still connect with those good friends. <laughs> I felt bad because I was talking to one of them, um, like I said, on Clubhouse, the one that I was shitting on for going maskless camping in the middle of a pandemic with a bunch of people, some who ended up getting COVID. And he heard that he listened to that episode and he realized, he, and he said he realized he, um, he, he needs to be better about taking preventative measures. And I was dying laughing because I had no idea he even listened to the podcast at all. I thought I was just saying that to a bunch of strangers on the internet who don't know who I'm talking about, but this is what I mean. Friends like him are good friends. <laughs> they actually take the time to check out even a snippet of what I've been up to these last couple of years. And it's hard to find people like that. That's why I want to get to know the people that do regularly listen to this show, because you mean the world to me. I need to establish more of a sense of community for everyone who listens to this. I don't know how to do that without being cultish. Like some of those uh, rooms on Clubhouse that are literally cryptocurrency cults. But anyways, I just needed to rant about shitty friends for a bit. There's too many of them in the world. We all have them. I can't believe I've wasted so much time with those types of people. It's probably part of the reason I was so miserable when I lived in Connecticut and also when I was at my old college. So let, let's go over some current events. This week has been pretty boring when it comes to the news. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been approved, so that's going to be out soon for distribution. <clears throat> that's, that's pretty cool. A round of applause for, for those scientists. A round of applause for the scientists, please. And like, a lot of us are really smart. I'm really smart. I'm happy about that. It, it's not as effective as the other ones, but it's only one dose, which means one less trip outside to get a needle in my arm. I would like to minimize the number of needles that enter my arm in the next few months. I really hate needles. But I'm going to have to get blood work done soon anyways because of the medication I'm on, so fuck. That's three needles right there. If I get one of, uh, if I get one of the vaccines that are delivered in two doses, so yeah, one, two, three. It's a uh, serious phobia of mine, and I don't know how to get over it. I've been poked with needles my whole life, though. I, I had Lyme disease four times as a kid. They've taken so much blood before. And there weren't any problems, like fear-wise, until I started having mental health issues really bad as an adult. And then this phobia of needles started just because I, I feel like it's a violation of my body. It, it's messed up. Like, like, I don't want anything puncturing my skin, either putting something in there or taking something. Especially, like, since, you know, I used to be... Back in the day, I used to do a lot of self-harm, and it kind of reminds me of that. It kind of puts me in a bad mental mental state um, when I was at my worst. But, um, but I've had IVs before from my car accident and from being hospitalized for mental breakdown where I took a ton of Xanax and was rushed to the hospital and passed out for hours, woke up in a hospital bed with IVs in. Ashley was sitting there as the doctor told her I had taken a bunch of Xanax and I immediately woke up knowing I was fucked. But being not okay for all this time has made me extremely and irrationally afraid of needles. Sometimes I 
pass out or have a panic attack even from just thinking about it. One time after blood work, I this was like last year or like 2019, I um I passed out in the street after um after getting blood work. And this is something that will have to be dealt with in therapy prior to getting the vaccine and going to my doctor's appointments. I don't know what I'm going to do. But so we talked about the vaccine. The um the Senate is voting on the $1400 stimulus checks because yeah, we're still working on that from July of 2020. It's pretty obvious to me that the government doesn't fucking work no matter who's in charge. <laughs> Nothing has changed. They can't even ensure every citizen isn't going to have to die because they're too poor to pay for fucking health care. They can't pass one fucking stimulus. They've, we've been working, working on this for almost a year, you pompous assholes. They can't even give the American people the minimal amount they need to buy groceries or pay like half a month's rent with $1,400, which is, yeah, literally like half a month's rent in New York City. How does that even help people? And why are people not even able to get that minuscule amount of help? I saw this tweet about how there will be the first hotel in space to be open for customers by the year 2027. And someone retweeted that saying, we literally just want health care. And I thought that was perfect. Why is it completely okay for people to starve and die out from disease and be homeless living in tents on the California freeway when government officials get to go to sleep in a huge brick house getting drunk off their ass in their wine cellar with their piles of super PAC money. And I'm talking about both sides here, not just one, not just the one I hate, both sides. Nothing is being done to help those people, the ones that are suffering. But rich assholes can build a space hotel so they can look down at all of us poor people on earth like little ants and point and laugh at us like the rich assholes that they are. Like, give people the money that they need. There is no argue, argument against that, which holds up when human rights are being trampled on. <clears throat> My voice, ugh. It's like the analogy I gave last episode. We're all fish out of water, flopping around on the dry ground, struggling for breath. And the Republicans come around with a gallon jug of water. And they're like, what's the problem? Stop flopping around like that. It's annoying. Find your own water. Stop asking for handouts. Stop expecting handouts. And then they leave you there to just like flop around, dry up. But then the Democrats come in right after. And you think you're saved. You're like, great. And they're like, I'm going to get you all the water you need because it's your right to have water as a fish. And then they come back six months later when your fish ass is, is dead, <laughs> long gone, and they toss a tiny puddle of water over your dry fish corpse and say, look, we did it. We kept our promise. What, why are you acting like we didn't? Stop laying there. Look at all the water. That's literally the best we could do. We kept our promise. <laughs> But but they also, like, low-key have a lot more water stashed up, and they've had it this whole time. They just weren't willing to give it up. That's what our government is when it comes to helping people in need. Like, I don't buy that Biden is going to keep any of his promises. What happened to keeping us out of unnecessary wars? That went right out the window, month one. Still hung up on that. Politicians are just shitty. Speaking of shitty politicians, I wonder what Ted Cruz has been up to. Should we take a look? It feels like it's been too long. Ted probably thinks he's safe, that we've forgotten about him. But alas, we have not. I don't forget about those types of things. How could you forget such a terrifying face? So here we go. The latest and greatest. Ted Cruz appearance. Good 
Joining me right now is Texas Senator, Senate Re Foreign Relations Committee, and Senate Judiciary Committee member, Ted Cruz. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Maria, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. So Maria, it's great to be with you. I am back from my doctor's appointment. They wanted to check and make sure everything was okay down there. And I will confirm with you, Marie, I still do not have testicles. But as many people believe that they were stolen by Donald Trump, many people like liberal short news Alex Mador has said they were not taken by Donald Trump. I have never had them in the first place. I, I've never had testicles. I've never owned a pair for myself. Never. Never have. Anyways, all oh right, we're talking about school. Yeah, so this is, um, what is it? He, he titled this himself. This is from his personal YouTube, or his Senator Ted Cruz verified YouTube account. It's a screen grab of Fox News from, like, today or yesterday. <laughs> and it's about Texas, which we'll, we'll go into that. but. Um, the title that he's chosen for this is Cruz Blasts Dems for Keeping Schools Closed and COVID Relief as a Liberal Wish List. <laughs> you wrote that yourself. I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm going to write that like on, on something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to make that a, this. I'm going to make this whole video an NFT and sell it. I hope that's okay with you, Ted. I'm going to sell your face as an NFT and call it NF Ted. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. You know, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a really good, really good idea. Would somebody buy that if I made an NFT, an NF Ted? I'm writing that down now. Now? I'm writing it down. NFT ideas. NF Ted Cruz. Okay, that's all I got there. That's my only NFT idea, is an NFT version of Ted Cruz. I'm going to learn how to do like 3D art. I don't know. Um, stay tuned on that. Anyways, I'll stop stalling and let's listen to this man speak. So, okay, you've got the mask mandate ending in Texas, and now an opportunity for business all around Texas, the opportunity to operate at 100 capacity, 100 yeah. percent capacity. Uh, tell us uh, about this and uh, what you think about California's governor uh, oh. criticizing it. Well, I, I think it's great news. Uh, I think Texans are ready to get back to work. Texans are eager to get back to work. I think as we look across the country, the lockdowns have proven to be a serious mistake. And then they hurt millions of people. They destroyed lives. They destroyed small businesses. And how are they a mistake? It's literally like what we have to do during like a widespread disease that we don't have a cure for. Like, isn't it common sense? that that's like the thing that we should do. I don't understand why this has to be like such a polarizing uh, issue between the two parties. Like it should just be common sense that it's like, okay, we can't like do shit the normal way because something has to change to lower the infection rates. As a smart Harvard guy, you should know that if if i'm being serious like i'm not i'm not going to do the eh, no testicles for for this one second like how does it make any sense to continue life the exact same way as we were doing prior to covid-19 being a thing cuz now we have this virus it's killing hundreds of thousands of people in our country and it's it's been doing this for like a year now and like why would we not try to do something different why would we not wear masks to prevent 
spreading this virus through our saliva, spit, and all our fucking shit. Why? Why would we? Why would we not do that? I don't get why that has to. Why we have to deny science and common sense just because we're on separate sides. And and people are ready to get to work. We we can be smart. We can be safe. We can practice social distancing. We've taken reasonable common sense steps to slow the spread of the virus. But the answer isn't to destroy millions of jobs. And the answer isn't also to keep millions of kids home from school. And and I got to say, Gav, Gavin Newsom, there's a reason the guy is facing a recall in California. That his policies were too disastrous for the liberal Democratic voters in California because he sh has shut the state down. He's destroyed jobs. He's hurting kids. By the way, the kids that are being hurt the most by Democrats shutting down schools are low income kids. They're African American kids and Hispanic. Well, no, the problem with low income areas education is not that they're not physically going to school, it's that they are not given. Just the schools in those areas are not given the proper amount of funding to actually sustain themselves and also provide a good education. There's this thing, Ted, it's called systemic racism. What you do is you, se you segregate everyone and you make all the, all the good services and the good real estate goes to one, one race and all the good jobs go to them. and then. You got the other side of town where you don't have all of the, these services that can help people. The budget of the schools is so low because nobody has money and no one can get a job because the system is set up against them. So it's just this endless cycle of like no one is getting the proper education in those areas. Because no one, like people like Ted Cruz, are voting against helping them. And if you want, if you really, if you if you're really worried about them getting a good education and missing out on that, then I don't know. Gavin Newsom should be making it so those kids can have the resources to do online learning properly, because not everyone has an electronic device. What they did in New York City here, because uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the schools, they like open and close, open and close, it's back and forth. It pisses me off so much because it, it's just counterproductive. Like they gave all of the students iPads. Like companies came in, stepped in, and did that. I think like Apple, AT and T, Spectrum, all like came together and they gave these kids iPads so that they can do online learning. You need more, you need systems that do those type of things set up and do things for those people that the schools do not have the funding for or just give the schools the proper funding to do that, regardless of their location, regardless of test score. It's about equity. Everyone should be able to get the same quality education. That doesn't mean everybody gets bad education. That means everybody gets good education. It's not a matter of, oh, these kids are home, so they, they're missing out on a lot. It's, no, these kids don't have enough to, do, to learn regardless of coronavirus. This is just exacerbating and making it more obvious. We've only gotten a minute and 34 into this. I'm just, I, I could go on. I could go on about this, but I won't. Kids, the, the, the data are showing that kids, many kids are six months or a year behind, and that educational harm will be with them the rest of their lives. It, 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 it is wrong. You know, the Democrats like to say, follow the science. They're not following the science. The CDC says, send kids back to school. It's safe to send kids back to school. And yet you've got a whole lot of Democratic politicians that care about that money from the teachers union bosses more than they care about the kids 
only 40% of school children in America right now are in person, in class, five days a week. That is- Yeah, that's good. That's what we need right now. Why, why do we have to force kids to go into unsafe schools? Why? Why, why is that such a charge issue for him? He banged his hand on the table like, like, like he's, ah, oh, why? Like, you're so tough, Ted. When you talk like this, you're so tough. I had to, like, I could get so angry. Oh, I could, I, I might just shit myself. Is an outrage. Wow. Is and, an outrage. and when you look at, 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 that's all folks who don't seem to care about these kids that are being abandoned i will say there's a reason gavin newsom is is unhappy because every year we see thousands and thousands of californians fleeing california and coming to texas and the fact that we're open for business and they're shut down is only going to accelerate that phenomenon well, I think this, this, this school conversation. I blame Joe Rogan 100%. I blame Joe Rogan 100% for everybody. Oh, I'm going to Texas. I'm following Joe. I'm going to bring all my meats, bring my, my fucking, <laughs> the, my deli, my butcher shop, the whole thing with me. Yeah, I'm going to go, go down to Texas, screw California and all these snowflakes, these heavy snowflakes ruining it. Gavin Newsom, he's a pussy. Gavin's a pussy. I'm going to go down to Texas, live next to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, because I'm a man. We don't wear masks. Texas, businesses are open. ...is so important, so let me stay on it for a moment. What is behind yeah. this, Senator? I mean, let's look at this stimulus plan. There's more money in this stimulus plan for schools. There was money in the CARES Act for schools. What did all of this money going to the schools accomplish if the teachers won't get back to work? Do you have any idea why kids are not in school, in in-person learning at this point? Well, you know, some years ago, the head of one of the big teachers unions was asked, how come you guys don't don't advocate for kids? How come you don't fight for the kids? And, and the answer was, well, you know, kids don't pay union dues. And, and, and this is right now a very cynical thing. And, and frankly, it's not serving the teachers. There, there, there are teachers all across this country who are incredibly honorable, who love their kids, who went into teaching because they want to make a difference. But their union bosses have decided the best of all outcomes is to keep getting paid and not have to go into work. Well, you know, that's not, that, that's not in the interest yeah, of the kids who, go who are work. going oh, to school. Because they're, they're not doing any work, right? They're, they're not doing any work. It's not like they're creating interactive presentations for their students that are even more engaging than actual, actual physical class. It's not like that's happening or anything, right? That that wouldn't that wouldn't be beneficial for you for some fucking reason that is unbeknownst to me. I I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, sorry, I was just looking up um something dumb, but uh, like it's not like teachers are doing nothing. Trust me. They're working. They're they're working very hard, overtime, because there is no excuse to not be working when classes are all online in your home. If you have good internet, they're not sleeping. They actually have to still do their jobs. It's more difficult. And and Ted Cruz is acting like they're on vacation. They don't get breaks. They don't. This has been extremely stressful for teachers everywhere. And we got idiots like Ted Cruz that haven't stepped into a classroom in the last like 30 years. So they wouldn't know how unsafe it is at schools right now when there's this virus going around because Ted Cruz has never gone to school during a pandemic. And Ted Cruz is not a scientist. And Ted Cruz's haircut looks absolutely horrible on him looks like a fat drunk morgan wallen so pretty much just morgan wallen in like 40 years coming 
coming soon from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We lost a pivotal piece of the Avengers last year. Chadwick Boseman is gone, and he's left a hole in our hearts and in our wallets. We need to continue making a Black Panther movie, even though the main character's actor tragically passed away. We wanted to pay our respects to this revolutionary piece of the cinematic universe and continue the legacy with someone who could carry on as the Black Panther. That's why we got Christopher Walken. Now, listen here. I'm the great African king you've been looking for. Oh, look at all these ladies with the bald heads. There must be a bad case of alopecia in the water or something. Kevin Feige, the producer of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, made the final decision to replace Chadwick Boseman with Christopher Walken for the Black Panther character. He's received many questions about his decision. Honestly, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, Christopher just wandered in one day and started eating at craft services we thought um yeah sure there's plenty of young black actors that would be perfect to play this iconic character but christopher walker i mean such a big name i was thinking to myself christopher that's how i refer to myself you play every type of character there is you've done you've done it all what's left and I settled on superhero. Everyone's doing it. I don't really see why people are so upset about me playing Black Panther. I don't even know what white washing is. I'm white, and I wash myself in the tub every day. And now you're telling me I can't do that. So, so I'm not. I stopped taking baths because of all those. Damn, keyboard warriors. Christopher smells bad. It's like old man stink mixed with public mall restroom. We here at Marvel tried explaining to him what whitewashing is, but we honestly don't know either. Just buy tickets to this, please. Then, then he might finally take a shower. Black Panther starring Christopher Walken. Possibly not coming ever and most likely to be cancelled. Walken Naka Naka forever, baby. Is that how you say it? I, I don't know yet. I don't know. Fuck Morgan Wallen, too. You guys hear about that? He, like, called somebody the N-word and the paparazzi got it on video? Yeah. He lost, like, everything. He lost his whole career. <laughs> Which is, like, good, because, like, he's just making every country musician look bad. Because, like, there are good country musicians that I, I do enjoy, and I do think are, like, very good humanitarian, like, nice, good-hearted people. And, and he is not one of them. He is not one of them. Anyways, yeah, that's what Ted Cruz looks like right now. And to see the Democrats, they literally, the head of the CDC got up and said, kids need to go to school. The science is clear. It, 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 kids need to be in school. It, it, and it, 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 the Biden White House walked that back, said, no, 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 no. That was not in, in, in any official capacity. That just was at a White House podium, the head of the CDC saying what the science says, because Democrats' view on the science, unfortunately, is very convenient that they call it science if it agrees with their partisan agenda. And if it doesn't agree with their partisan agenda, never mind, don't look at it. You know, you mentioned this $1.9 trillion massive spending in pork bill. This bill, 9% yeah. of the bill is focused on health care needs and COVID. So 91% so of the bill is not about fighting the pandemic. The money for schools, a lot of the money for schools in that bill is for years in the future. It's not even for right now. We have a crisis now. Right. But what this bill is, is it's a liberal wish list. It's every priority the Democrats have of paying off their political cronies. It includes, by the way, a bridge to Canada for Chuck Schumer, because apparently a bridge to Canada is, is how we're going to defeat COVID. 
editing a bridge to Canada. What what does that mean? I'm I'm looking that up. Bridge to Canada. Chuck Schumer. Um, could funds for an upstate New York bridge derail Biden's COVID relief bill? Um, Republican leaders are speaking out against President Joe Biden's 1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill, accusing Democrats of wasteful spending for items like a bridge in upstate New York. Uh, It's a $1.5 million request for the Seaway International Bridge, which connects the U.S. with Canada over the St. Lawrence River. And came from Donald Trump's administration. The bridge is also located in GOP um, Representative Elise Stefanik's district in the North County. Um... Democratic Senate aide said this underscores the struggle Republicans have have with messaging against this popular legislation. Um, well, what um, what's in the bill? The aide added that a recent morning consult poll shows 60% of registered Republican voters are supportive of Biden's $1.9 trillion plan. The package also includes a third round of stimulus checks worth $1,400, a new child tax credit worth up to $3,600, $400 in weekly unemployment benefits, $70 billion towards vaccination centers and COVID-19 testing, $350 billion emergency funding for state, local, and territorial governments, and a raise in the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour. I wouldn't call this a wish list as much as a bunch of things that should have been made right a long fucking time ago. Ted, you make it sound like Democrats are just making stuff up out of thin air. These are all things that people have needed now for a very long time. And you guys have constantly just shot them down. The fact that Ted Cruz can go on this stupid fucking network, Fox News, and and lie about this shit and make it seem like people don't need this? Make it seem like it's a bunch of useless stuff. A bunch of useless, wishless stuff. It's not. Newsflash, Ted. People are actually struggling. I know you were without power for like five minutes back like last week or whenever that was, but like People are actually struggling. People have issues that are going to last a very long time, that are going to impact many people's lives for a very long time because of this virus, because of everything that's happened. You cannot just pretend that everything is fine. You're creating a false reality, and you're going to have idiots believing you. Includes what's being called the tunnel of love, Nancy Pelosi's tunnel of love, a, a, a tunnel in Silicon Valley that, that, that she wants constructed. And I get that their priority is bring home the bacon and buy votes, but, but this is irresponsible and it's wrong. Yeah, but like those are infrastructure. A bridge to Canada, we kind of need that. From New York to Canada, like upstate New York to Canada, that's important. How else are you going to get there? That's ridiculous that that's even being questioned. And a tunnel? Yeah, we need a tunnel. Sometimes you have to build a tunnel, dude. You can't just... I, I have this uncle who... He was... um, We were driving... We were in Chicago and we were driving up these new ramps these new on-ramps that were, like, really elaborate. And and um, I was like, wow, these are really cool. They look really new. And he was like, yeah, it was useless infrastructure that Obama's wasted, Obama wasted money on. And I'm like, what, do you want the old shit to crumble while you're on it? You have to rebuild infrastructure sometimes. If it's been there for too long, 
You have to make adjustments. You have to do updates. You can't just leave shit the way it's been forever. I don't understand the conservative idea of, like, just keep everything the same because it's been fine. Like, it hasn't been fine. It's been fine for you, maybe. But everybody else is suffering. And it's important to note, in the last year, we passed five bipartisan COVID relief bills. Republicans are eager to work together on uh, getting vaccines out, on fight, fighting the virus, on getting people back to work, on helping small businesses. And we've demonstrated we'll roll up our sleeves and work with Democrats. Joe, I will roll up my sleeves and go to Cancun and chill in the sun and and actually not wear sleeves at all because I'm in Cancun chilling, smoking a cigar, doing my thing. and. Once I get caught, I come back home and roll up my sleeves and hand out two water bottles to families. And, and then I go home after the photo op and then I masturbate to Twitter porn because I actually did do that. And you can find out about that more on the interweb. <laughs> Joe Biden and the Democrats have said to Republicans, go jump in a lake. They don't want to work with us. They don't want to talk with us. They are going to That's try to true. ram through a partisan wish list. That is false. And it is also not, not a wish list, sir. It, it is a list of things, yes, that need to be done. <laughs> Ted doesn't understand the need for infrastructure. In a developing, like, in a world, in a country that is, like, constantly growing, <laughs> we couldn't possibly need more infrastructure. Are you kidding me? We have to keep building shit. The population is growing, dude. What are you talking about? I would say, what are you on? But I know you're too lame to ever do drugs, so... That's not true. I was around cannabis one time, marijuana one time. I was around it. My my friend had it, and I called the police on him after he showed it to me. I immediately called the police. He's still in jail. That was 20 years ago. Still in jail. That was 40 years ago. He never got out. <laughs> He does look like a narc. Like, totally. Let's go through a little bit more of this. Completely unrelated to the pandemic because they got power yeah. and they don't want to waste the power. And I think that's really cynical and it's, a, it's unfortunate. You guys, even if that was the case, you, the Republicans would be doing the, the exact same thing. Did you guys not make it so we could not... Um, induct that supreme court justice that that Dem it was democrats like choice it was their chance to pick when obama was still president and republicans blocked it and then the second trump got in all they were doing was confirming supreme court justices for themselves didn't they do that oh they just want to take advantage of the power while they have it not like we did that the whole four years that that were that just happened that just occurred well it is unfortunate and i guess it tells us that the republicans can't do anything about it are you going to take up this bill today in the senate what's the timing on this because there are ongoing debates that remain uh, on what's in it this democrat push for a 15 dollar an hour minimum wage bernie sanders says he's yeah. planning to try to overrule the senate parliamentarians block of the 15 dollar minimum wage uh, some cuts, uh, they say, have been made to the proposal. That Silicon area, uh, Silicon Valley area rail expansion, we're told now, was taken out of the bill. Is that right? A hundred million dollars for that? I, you know, if it has been taken out, I haven't seen that, although it's difficult to know. Okay. One of the things they're trying Damn. to do is ram this through shit, so Ted. fast. That there's a ton mm. of things in this. You remember Nancy Pelosi famously said about Obamacare, you got to pass it to find out what's in it. 
Uh, that, that's right. very much the approach here. I mean, we've got our staff is reading through this, but there's all sorts of garbage buried here that, that people will find out weeks or months from now. $1.9 trillion that's is a ton of yes. money. And, and so- Yeah, it is a lot of money. It is. But we also need to help people. Like, if that's what it takes to fix all of the issues from the last four years, including the coronavirus, and all of the trauma and damage that it caused to this country, then it is a cost that we have to pay to get people out of this. The, the plan, what Chuck Schumer wants to do is bring it up in the Senate tomorrow. Um, under the, the budget, budget Act, there are unlimited amendments. I think it is likely we will be there very, very late tomorrow, way into the early hours of the morning. And, and I, I got to tell you, Republicans are united. I think there's a good chance you will see no Republicans supporting this because this is not, it's not okay. a good faith attempt at either defeating the, the virus or at getting the economy moving. It, it is a partisan yeah. wish list. Uh, a lot of Republicans, we're spending a lot of time discussing strategy about how to fight it. But at the end of the yep. day, Schumer and Pelosi and Biden are just wanting to jam it through. I, I give you an example of that, by That's the way. So, yeah, uh, you, you know, Neera Tandon, who, who is Joe Biden's nominee to be uh, the director of the Office of Management and Budget, although they withdrew the nominee yesterday. Uh, she yes. had opposition from all the Republicans. Joe Manchin, a Democrat, came out against her. You know, the, the, the one Republican who was considering voting for her was Lisa Murkowski from Alaska. And, and apparently she was negotiating, trying to convince the Biden administration not to destroy the oil and gas industry in Alaska. There are a lot of jobs in Alaska that depend on oil and gas, a lot of jobs in Texas that depend on oil and gas. Well, uh, it appears the Biden administration decided they want to destroy those jobs more than they want their nominee. So they withdrew the nominee. And, and there's these um, things called. Um I don't know if you've heard of them, Ted. They're called Teslas. They don't run on gasoline. They run on electricity. I don't know if you guys have electricity. Oh, wait, you do because, yeah, you do. While everybody else didn't have electricity, you had it. You know, I can't, I can't listen to this garbage anymore. He's going to go in on eco-friendliness. It's like we, we know that it's the right thing to do for the earth, Ted that there's no argument for continuing to emit fossil fuels into our atmosphere that are only killing this earth even more and limiting our time here even more. They're like anti-common sense in the Republican Party. That's, but that's Ted Cruz, the comedic gift that keeps on giving. Good old Raphael. Do we have any other news? Um, so yeah, Ted Cruz's home state of Texas is about to be going through it in the next couple of weeks. The government, may, the governor, made the dim-witted decision of not only opening everything up at 100% capacity, but also removing the mask mandate. So we have a bunch of maskless Texans crowding together inside while the virus is still very much an issue. And not enough people are vaccinated for there to be herd immunity. I see a major, major issue with that. So does the CDC, who I'm pretty sure were recently quoted as saying, don't open everything up just because of the numbers of slightly lower. That's just going to bring the infection rates right back up to where they were, if not worse. This is going to be an interesting experiment, to say the least. But um, there's no way that this works out. Those Texans better not come to any of our states and infect us. We're all following the rules here. We don't need any more problems than we already have. I'm just finding out now, too, that Mississippi has also ended the mask mandate. So fuck, dude. This is not good at all. People are acting like the virus doesn't even exist anymore. And like I've been saying, those people are screwing it up, the rest of us, who have been doing what the CDC says is the right thing to do. Not everything is a fucking conspiracy. This is an actual real threat that needs to be taken as one.
I did talk to someone who follows me on Twitter because I said something dissing Texas, and they said they're still going to wear their masks, so um, shout out to Roberta. If you're listening, I'm really happy to hear that you're doing the right thing to ensure the safety of your fellow people, even if they don't have the same concerns. And I hope no one gives you a hard time um, in Texas for doing so, for wearing your mask, because you're just protecting them. If they do, send them to me. I'll talk some sense into them with facts and facts and logic, Ben Shapiro. Well, actually, what it comes down to, if you think about it, <laughs> the liberals, they always want to talk about their feelings, but truly, facts don't care about your feelings. My wife has never seen my penis. I tell her, no, honey, logically, you don't have to see it, okay? We can just turn the lights off. You never have to look at it. Don't don't put the put, put the ruler away. We don't have to do that. Please put the ruler away. Logically, it makes my feelings hurt. That's my Ben Shapiro. I've seen a lot of those Karen videos where people are harassing other people for actually wearing a mask, and I think that's disgusting. Like, imagine doing the right thing to keep the person who's harassing you safe from being infected, and they're yelling at you, telling you you're stupid for trying to protect them. It's ridiculous, but speaking of Karens, <laughs> it's that time of the episode where we make fun of the latest and wildest Karen freakouts of the week and keeping up with the Karens. So without further ado, let's jump into this shit. What? What is she singing? I want everybody to know I'm mad because Black Lives Matter sucks. Oh. They should get rid of it. What the fuck? Just to inform you guys, she is a middle-aged white lady, the usual suspect. She's screaming out in public that she hates Black Lives Matter? So what you're saying is you hate black people. You're pretty much just admitting that you're a racist. You, you are a terrible human being. And you're letting everybody know that. And now you're on the internet. Welcome. You suck. You suck. I had to eat it through with Will Wilson into all those protests. Yeah. I was eating lunch for whatever. Well, some random lady. And you're not acting professional. Some random lady just came and asked for my, my identification. You are tampering with the. Some random lady pulls up while he's like at his car and is like videotaping him asking for identification. And he's probably a minority. Because she's a white lady, and she thinks he's suspicious when he's just minding his own business. So I'm guessing this is another racism incident, and this lady looks like a trashy person, so that would make sense. Law. My credentials while I'm at work. <laughs> I don't know that you... Show me your credentials. Are you a cop, lady? You're not a cop. Well, he doesn't have to show you anything. Why do, you, why do you have the authority over him? <laughs> You're making a fool of yourself, man. No, I am protecting the DMV. You're making a complete fool no, of yourself right now. No, I'm protecting the DMV. You know what? I'm married to a cop. <laughs> so? What does that supposed to mean? It means that you're, you're not complying with me. You're making, you're making you're a fool. You're not complying with me. Just because you're married to a cop doesn't mean you carry the badge, too. You're, you're an idiot, lady. You're a fucking idiot. You're acting like an employee. You're making a fool of yourself, no, ma'am. No, you are. Ma'am, can carry on. Look at this right here. Look at this woman. I don't even want to say what I really want to say, man. Is she calling the police on huh? him? Never thought this was Christ, 
fucking piece of shit. I hope your kids get cancer. Jesus. What are you looking at? Jesus. Somebody is having a bad day. This, she's in traffic, by the way. So this is in traffic. She's got her windows down in her car. People are just sitting there, and she's doing this. <laughs> oh shit! She's chasing it. Put a mask on. I'm eating right now. I'm not you. Put a mask on. Do you want to talk? Talk. Let's do it. 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 let us do yeah, we're doing. Who's this little puny? Yeah, I got you. Don't worry. Who's this puny? We're gonna call him puny. 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 Hi puny. Oh, there you go. There you go. Hi puny. Okay, guys. Are you drunk? She's she's definitely drunk. Her mask isn't even over her nose. Like she she's just a gross person. So you were saying we got a Karen right here. We got a Karen right here. Puny. Bro, you're one of us. We got a Karen right here. What's a Karen? What's a Karen? Puny. We got Puny. You see me, sir? You got out. Draw outside. No more fight. Draw outside. It's fight, fight me, okay? This is attacking me right now. I'm defending myself. It's a lie. I'm defending myself. You're live on Instagram. You're live on Instagram. Go, go, go. You're live on Instagram. Help, please. Hey, fuck you! Oh, fuck you! I've seen this one. Grow some fucking balls, baby! Grow some fucking balls! Fuck up, fuck up. Listen, you listen to me, you little SOB, okay? How's that? Is that better than that? Oh, so much better. Yeah, okay, listen, I have a 15-year-old, I have pets. So you're swearing at a 15-year-old, <laughs> and you have a 15-year-old. <laughs> Oh, I just witnessed excuse it. Excuse me for swearing. I At a 15 my... year old. That is not okay. It's not okay? No. But it's not okay. It's not okay to, to swear. To it's walk. okay to yell at him for you running in front of your car. Yeah. But it's not okay to swear at a little kid. Tell them to. They're not my kids. Why is she so like scatterbrained? Like they always can't get their thoughts together. I don't know if it's just lack of education. Lack of brain cells, Xanax, or all of all three. But a lot of these moms are on Xanax, just so you know. Kids, if you find a bottle of Xanax in your in your um your mom's medicine cabinet, you'll know why she's a psycho. Why should I tell him? Well then what the f do you have to do with it? Get off my driveway now. Get off my driveway. This, they're not my kids. Get off my driveway. What the hell do you have to do Come with that? I don't want you standing in my freaking driveway. You can well, your Well, I didn't want to hit him. Here. Record you because you're being really rude. You can try to and be a redhead as hard as you want, and you'll always have those eyebrows. Uh -huh. Hey, let, let me, me ask you something. Is it because we're brown? Is that why you're being so rude? Because she's black we were for my, one thing. She's not black. <laughs> she's Moroccan. Oh, her hair looks well, pretty black. Okay, uh, first of all, I am. Okay, I'm but actually from Africa. We're brown, and, and, and trust me, I will go blonde. You look better than you. Go get your hair done as a blonde, and you will never Come look here. as good. Why is she going up to them in the mall and harassing them because they dyed their hair red and they're people of color and it's not their natural color? Why? Why is that her problem? She's just some random bitch that, like, isn't minding her own business. Please, please come okay, come on, let's go. We're getting up on, me, getting up on you because you're being so racist to us. Not. You're being you racist. Being real you're, be you're being racist. Are you crazy? No, I'm this not 2018. crazy. 2018, how dare you be racist to her? Are you crazy? This is ridiculous. I've never met... No I don't. I don't, but I have a butt. I don't, but I have a butt. really gross looking. We said nothing about your regular... We have her nothing stick, about your like a stick in it or oh. something. Wait, wait, wait. We said nothing about Get your Get out of my face. You Get touch her? Out of my face. You want to go to she jail for her? She didn't touch you. Uh, she didn't touch you. And we have this on video. But walking around talking. Like a motherfucker. I'm an orange girl. All right. Deal. Serious? 
Fuck, she's on crack. Oh no. You want me to do the same? Oh yeah, they always take out the camera and do it back. Like, I can record you too. I can do the same thing. I'll take a picture of every last one of you. Yeah, and they take a picture. They don't take a video either. It's like what? I take a picture. I take a picture. That's child pornography. It's not child pornography. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's child pornography. Get you locked up for that. Without permission. Get you locked up for that. We're not doing anything. What are they doing? They're skateboarding? Follow me on Instagram. If you're going to call it about the phone. You're going to the chair department. You guys use scooters all the time. I get it all the time. Hand over sheriff's department. Sheriff's department? They're fucking kids. They're like in middle school. Let them do what they're doing. Leave them alone. Oh my fucking god. You fucking bitch. What a. Oh my god. I hate them. I hate them all. They're the worst. These Karens, they're they're just a they're a plague on humanity and we need to destroy them. I don't know how. That was a good one though. That was a really good one. <laughs> it made me very angry. But um so without further ado, um I think it's time to go into a relationship advice and um, see where that takes us. Yeah? Um, oh, fuck. Oh, no. Is this me? <laughs> Is this about me? i matcha tea. Oh, no. Ashley likes matcha tea. Fuck. Oh, I'm in trouble. Found my boyfriend's Reddit after typing in his most used username online. Oh, fuck. And found that he commented on a Reddit forum called Discord Nudes. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, it's a joke. It's a joke. She's going to be listening to this at some point, and I have to make it very clear that this is a joke. This is a relationship advice that somebody wrote on Reddit. And we're gonna, we're gonna try to see what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> I had previously expressed my discomfort with him looking at girls' nudes before, but ultimately decided to let him decide on his own if he wants to look at that stuff or not after getting, an, getting advice from many people who were married, single, men, women. I told him I still didn't like it, though, but it was ultimately his choice and asked if he could cut down on that content. He said he would cut back. Tonight I got back into old habits, snooping, and typed his username into Google. His Reddit was the only thing that popped up. He had no posts but two comments, one of them on some random vaping forum. Oh, fuck, is this me? Is this me? <laughs> no, I'm very active on Reddit, that's the thing. I was like, D did I get fucked up and comment on a Discord nude? One of them on some random vaping forum and the other on r slash discord nudes. He had commented a discord link on one of the posts that was titled more like this in the link below. I clicked on it and it said it was expired. So IDK where that leads to that it leads to a discord page. N I now feel weird about this whole thing again and feel like I shouldn't have told him it's okay. Can anyone who knows anything about this Reddit in particular, or Reddit's sim subreddits, you mean, 
similar to these shed shed some light here and tell me what's going on um well you know the issue well yeah one of the issues is you don't you don't know where that link is going but it's it's going to a discord channel like somebody's discord channel whether it be one that he's a part of or that he participates in in some way shape or form um probably jerks off to if we're being real um but if it's something that makes you uncomfortable then you have to create those boundaries or establish those boundaries through clear communication that's what you got to do Otherwise, he's not going to know to stop or to ease back a little bit, ease up, you know? Um, communication, that's always the answer with these. these. Um, anyways, I think, I think I'm going to call it here. I think I'm going to call it here. Um, I gotta eat lunch, man. But thank you very much for for always listening, for being cool people. I appreciate it a lot. And um we're gonna keep chugging along here. Um you can follow me at Alex underscore M A D O R E on Twitter or on Instagram at Alex M A D O R E. So that's Alex Mador. Um, this has been the Short News Podcast. Thank you, as always, for listening. I will see you guys in a matter of days with another great episode. But until then, bye bye. I love you and peace. <laughs>